Where did it go? Well, the CD-ROM <laughs> took over. Where the CD-ROM went? Well, the USB took over. How about the USB now? Well, we have uh, yeah, uh, Bluetooth or you name it. So I think, yeah. And then we don't need to uh, destroy, like the CD-ROM didn't destroy the floppy disk, you know? Uh, it just became obsolete. And I think we can do that uh, by creating uh, alternatives in terms of energy, in terms of food, producing and this and creating this autonomous because the market monetary system wants uh, you to be uh, addicted to buy things and, and uh, you require things to survive and so on but you know how it works but uh, yeah so that's the idea like to become independent power yourself power your neighbors uh, create uh, yeah alternatives and then you rely less on the system and at some point, well, it's, yeah, it's, crumb it's crumbling uh, already, just going to crumble a bit uh, faster. Uh, nevertheless, it might be uh, quite uh, aggressive on the way down. Uh, and they have a lot better weapons uh, <laughs> developed and organized. Uh, uh, professional uh, killer killing machines. Uh, to f so I, I personally think that uh, we should not go, if, I hope we don't have to fight uh, like this, uh, because they have the, yeah, definitely better technology to kill uh, people than we do. Uh, <laughs> nevertheless, uh, yeah, we can maybe come up with some creative ideas, uh, but I will rather not do that and focus on uh, having fun, creating alternatives, uh, these eco-villages, uh, and then people might just say, okay, but you know what? I prefer this uh, life without money and politicians instead of yeah, having to listen to somebody and, and not being representative uh, to me or having to prostitute myself uh, for the market monitor system which doesn't care about me anyways. So I think yeah, when people will have uh, yeah, both and they can choose and uh, yeah, even the corrupt, uh, politi uh, the corrupt politicians and the greedy bankers are welcome to join. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And people are also welcome to come back to the uh, exchanging of goods with piece of metal and impressive piece of paper, uh, <laughs> if they want to. But at some point, it's going to be embarrassing. Like to, hey, I want some food. Oh, uh, oh, I need those coins. Ah, I don't have the coins. Okay, then I will go for the <laughs> croissant I found in the uh, back of uh, Briançon or whatever. You know. Uh, so that's it. Yeah, it's just my opinion. But I think by creating these alternatives, so just keep on creating and having fun with it, and more people will join join this. And I think, yeah. Yeah, I think violence and crimes and throwing stones, we've done it before. I don't think we went so far, but we might have to do it again. Uh, and yeah, and the guys, uh, they will have to. Okay. So it would be better to change would, the people. Uh, I would uh, like yeah. to uh, yeah. ask uh, people to have uh, short, brief interventions where yes. thought is condensed, where we really just express one idea and then leave the word to someone else and to have collective thinking so that we just express one thought we think contributes and then allows someone else to complete our thought or drive the uh, discussion in another direction. I'm saying this because we have four uh, people uh, waiting to speak and I would also like at this point to invite those who are sitting outside to join us. It's quite cold mm -hmm. so we want to get <laughs> close to each other. Uh, I think we all fit yeah. if we just... Uh, Christian, come here. Please. I don't know. Uh, That's not the blanket. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I took shower this morning. <laughs> Short one. <laughs> With my shower, uh, save energy heads. <laughs> but a boat? Mm -hmm. no. At a boat? <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'll I just thought it was a really interesting discussion around like, okay, what is individual action versus like, what do we do in more organized things autonomously? And it makes me think about, uh, also this it's a question if you, you, if you ask, if you're working on single actions that are sort of leading the way to a transition or to a more autonomous action, or if it's working more specifically on <coughs> Um, systemic solutions or systemic change and I think that's something that we're starting to see now that the movements are doing is much more uh, specific groups working on specific uh, systemic 
problems. Um, so somehow there is some development there, and I think it's interesting to think about it. Um, what the really cha what the challenge is about that kind of approach because it's very distributed. There's a lot of people working on their kind of own interests, but it kind of needs this very like uh, specified or like very uh, how could you say f focused on one solution or one somehow systemic solution. Uh, we need a lot of those at the same time somehow. But I think the challenge is now how to to how do, how do these all these people who are working on autonomous solutions in society in general, how do they actually also become a larger kind of movement or um, entity that works maybe a little bit more together? Yeah. I remember what I saw in, in, in Catalonia with the uh, 15th of May movement, which yeah. was a really big uh, topic where people were like really trying to break down a lot of walls. They tried to organize in groups and at some point uh, this kind of people's movement, I think we saw it also with the Occupy movement, yeah. is that when people come around in a very autonomous way, it's really difficult to then at some point find a, one kind of common voice. I think the future, the future uh, challenges that in this is like how to bridge and create synergies within these kind of autonomous networks. And that's what I think is really interesting to think about. And to political yeah. Uh, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I was thinking about the things you were both saying and about autonomy and power and, and I guess what is the best action to take in any situation. And I think that there's a, there's a power in doing. So there's some people who, for example, act very, very terribly in all the ways, but they do most of the work and so they have a power just because they've done that. And so when you volunteer to do a workshop, like you were saying, and, and then you want for all these other reasons that aren't, that aren't really just kind of giving, then at least the only thing we can do is take uh, take responsibility that we're human and we, we we have negative aspects and we always do things for negative and positive reasons and just put that on the table. Yeah. Just like we do with gender issues or with other issues, just have to, to keep trying to do that. It's like trying to be transparent and there's always going to be power in loads of different ways but we can talk about them and yeah. kind of try and try and make them more obvious. And then about dependence and in, in independence and what do we want to be independent from? It's like a, if you become independent from the state, then you have all these set things that you know how they work probably, and you are dependent on them, and you become kind of independent by creating your own thing. And then you still become dependent on those other things that you've created. So usually it becomes your friends, and are they still, is this couple still together? And these other guys who want to get the food, are they still gonna come, you know? You become dependent on all these other things, so you're still gonna be dependent. And it's like understanding what interdependence is, and, and who you wanna be dependent on, and how. So. I think that was a wonderful talk, the last one, but the, uh, I wanted to say something about the previous couple of comments concerning the kind of whether there's a possible kind of bigger narrative that people can mobilize to, in, to sort of uh, talk about shared um, prospects for autonomous uh, um, projects or, or movements. And I, I, I guess one of, one of the things that comes up when, especially in, well, in meetings like this, people often name capitalism as, as the kind of big other that, um, uh, to be fighting against. I think one of the things that I feel more afraid of at the moment now, though, is the mobilization of the idea of the welfare state to do pretty awful things. So we're going to defend our welfare state against migrants and so on. We're going to yeah. capture people's votes within uh, uh, the, the yeah. political right, catching yeah. votes through a narrative saying we're defending the welfare state. Yeah. So one, one bigger narrative that one could use to, to describe shared goals amongst autonomous uh, networks of support and projects and so on is to say, you know, maybe this is pushing against capitalist forms of economic organization, but it could also be an alternative to the way welfare states can get caught in a voting logic, you know, that this, people organize welfare states for the people who can vote for the politicians who are making the policies um, uh, for how that welfare state is going to be organized. So I think capitalism, critiques capitalism, you know, they're important, but the welfare state is going to be a really important focus point that is going to be mobilized heavily by the right wing. And it seems to me that's one narrative that can be used for describing what autonomous um, uh, projects can offer, namely forms of organization and support that are not caught in the logic of, of voting. Do you have a, a recommendation for alternative if it's not voting? 
I'm not, I guess, can I, I'll just say one, one I say, I think one thing, one thing is to talk about how to, uh, you know, this is on the level of presenting what people Sorry, I didn't hear the last sentence. This, the, so that's what, where I ended what I just said was on the level of the narrative you could tell about uh, what unifies different um, uh, autonomous projects. But I, I also, I'm not anti-statist in the way that other people are here necessarily. I think if you can mobilize political parties that are interested in building welfare states that are not exclusive and do not um, shift radically to the right, I, I think that's another way people can go also by party politics. Um, but having those options in mind seems important to me. I thought it was really um, when you talked about are we, it goes on to what you just said about what are, and also what you said, how do we link these autonomous groups, um, and sorry about what you said also, where you said like, you know, drawing this comparison of going from the showers to the, you know, renewable energy windmills or whatever, like stepping up on the global climate change issue. And you know, have we are we still riding bikes in activism, or have we stepped it up? And it makes me think of what you had addressed, also the Quince M movement, which we you know had been preceded by the Arab Spring, which then was followed by the Occupy movement, which was global. I mean, it was in Copenhagen. I don't know about oh, it was in Copenhagen, kind of small, but I mean, the pancake bike was there, you know. Um, and they um, and you're asking whether we've come to that next level. And I don't know if you guys are aware, but the reason why Bernie Sanders, who has been in politics for 30 years, ran for president was because he was approached by activists who had come out of the Occupy movement. And despite the fact that we now live in a world where like Donald Trump was ultimately elected, it was a huge like feat, like it was like a huge victory for the American left in that respect, for somebody like that to even make it so far on the American presidential stage. And some people say that um, now with this, like, you know, Trump being elected in the US, the political landscape in Europe also turning very much to the right, um, that that is maybe what the left needs in order to, you know, really have a revolution. I'm kind of scared of that because they can really change a lot of things and, like, you know, roll back on the welfare state on a million things, put in xenophobic policies of closing borders, et cetera. Um, but you know, if you're asking whether we have stepped it up, Bernie Sanders is a direct effect of the Occupy movement, and the Occupy movement is a direct effect of people coming together autonomously because they're pissed off about something and they can't put their finger on it. And it is it was it politicized so many people, so many people who had no idea what this meant before, who had been never you know had the opportunity to speak in an assembly, became political by going to these meetings or the Quince M movement where you know, all these huge assemblies in the Spanish cities then disintegrated and became neighborhood assemblies and like what has now become the PA, or what is it called? The, this Platform Against Mortgage. Yeah, Platform Against Mortgage. Uh, huge, yeah. immensely awesome platform. Podemos in Spain, I mean, all this stuff. So I just wanna say like, maybe we are approaching that time and like, we just gotta stay positive. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Like to say a little bit of the same thing. Uh, yeah. uh, also to some of the things that Lindsay support. Uh, when I think about the left, it's like, it is, was that possible idea of, uh, of, of a positive outlook on, on other initiatives that have been taken on the left? Uh, I, I sometimes get scared that people start to fight over which is the right initiative. Is it radical enough or is it 100% like, uh, unheroical? And I think, of course, that's the idea, but I think for me, it's uh, there's a, a lot of efforts going into it from a lot of people, and I think it is, uh, uh, at least for me, I think it's important to be positive about all these ideas that have been taken and initiatives in that. And some of them might not be the right ones, some of them might be bad in the long run, but I think we're all working on the same thing, at least that's the feeling that I have. And I think that any, any initiative that creates positive relations between uh, humans in civil society and in broader contexts are on the right way. That there are positive, good relationships between people, uh, non-exclusion, and uh, of course, uh, that you mentioned in the beginning, that's the idea that we're all working towards. And I, I think that, at least for me, I think it's also a narrative that that is uh, uh, unifying for the left. Um, at least I see it that. Way. But it was 
Then we can go through the same. Yeah. Um, it's kind of what you were saying about the lift um, stepping up, and actually what you talked about. I just wanted to bring that up. Uh, we talked about outside. outside? Okay. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, with it's almost a positive thing that Trump was elected in some way because um, it's kind of like grassroots people can now get elected and anybody could really get elected. So maybe we'll have someone who's very honest and not a complete idiot like Trump, but you know that is honest and speaks in mind and you know, but a better a better option. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, but maybe now, uh, yeah, we can. Uh, People will realize that they can. Uh, you can run for president now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can take a vote. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, I just want to talk about this whole left versus right thing. Uh, I'm totally not down for like divisiveness. Uh, I think once we start labeling that road, then that's when shit goes down the drain. Uh, that's just my take on this. Yeah. Mm, I think uh, there's really no left or right. I mean, people like to label them, but it's just about something that works for this planet. And, you know, if people are really into UFO stuff, they're like...